Hey guys, what is up Dave here coming back to you with another Racing Rivals private server update. Now don't get excited, this doesn't mean that we can actually do this. This is just yet another step in the right direction. Basically I had to recreate my old environment from one of my really old videos where I was actually kind of playing the game. And with that, I wanted to actually make this video on how I created that environment because I don't want to forget how I did it because I forgot how I did it. And this could also shed some light to some other people who have wanted to try to maybe get into making private servers for older Android games themselves. There's another game I would very much like to do this with, and this is the perfect environment to do it. And I just wanted to show off exactly what you have to do. So first of all, obviously you need your old APKs. Da -da -da, Racing Rivals 4.2.1. Why 4.2.1? Because... The APKs for 4.2.1 don't have any obfuscation of the code like every other version of Racing Rivals has. So, here we go, 4.2.1. That's the one we're using because I can point this version to any server I want on the planet. So, APK modding is a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother video tutorial. I think I have like five of the same tutorial up on how to modify an APK. If you need me to go over it in a 2023 sense, maybe I'm willing to do it. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I also had to make the APK work on an emulator. For some odd reason, if I left the x86 folder in here, it didn't work. I don't know why. It would black screen on the emulator after using an APK signer. So I had to go in, delete the x86 folder so it always emulates the ARM uh, 32 uh, folders or variant so it always emulates the Android version I don't know why that was so hard to say now as you can see I have Android 5 here this is an Android 5.1.1 emulator that is actually very important because we have to do some network analysis and network data logging in order to actually try to make this work so the first thing you need to do is open up your settings well, actually, first thing you need to do is download Nox 6.3.0.8 or any emulator that lets you run an older version of Android older than 6.0. Um, this just happens to be the easiest one. You just click download and you're good to go. Also, you're going to need Fiddler uh, 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 proxy. You're going to want Fiddler Classic. So you want to go Fiddler Classic try for free i don't know why it says try for free when it is free anyway you're going to want to download it install it and then you're going to actually need to run it so when you have it running you need to go to tools <coughs> sorry https under options check these two top text boxes and then go to actions and export root certificate to desktop at that point, you end up with a file on your desktop called, I'm betting you can guess, fiddlerroot.cer. And what you need to do with this file is when you have Knox open next to it, just drag and drop it and put it on your uh, internal storage here. So it'll simply just drag and drop over. As you can see, it's right here. And then what you want to do is actually open up settings. And you want to go to security. You want to go to install from SD card. And you want to install your root certificate. I don't know why it says, oh, May 12th is when I made the file. So click this, name it what you need to name it. It'll ask you to make a passcode for the lock screen because it's just built in Android security. And yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, par for the course from that point you need to tell it where fiddler is so you need to go to wi-fi you need to long click uh hold click whatever you want to call it modify network and you need to set it to whatever your ip config is so for me you can see that if i go here it tells me 196.168.1.194 is what i need to put right here and then the port is always uh 8888 save it you're good to go. Your network traffic is now going to be monitored by Fiddler. So once you have that, you can have your APK installed on here. 
Um, the actual signing method of the APK I had to use was actually Signature Killer with Lucky Patcher. Luckily, it actually makes the APK smaller too, so it's kind of a win-win. But from there, once you have your APK on here, you can have Fiddler running. And I'm going to capture traffic. I'm going to run Racing Rivals. And as you can see, I get an error because this file is the incorrect file. It has the wrong version number in it, but it at least works, sort of. Uh, I'm going to try actually. A different file. I don't really care about that. We're going to restart. I'm going to hope it's running this. You can always check by going to inspector, go to text view. Yeah, it is responding with my local file. So what I could actually try to do, and I doubt this is going to work, is automatic breakpoints and do after response. Now I can do restart. And I can try to change this. So like this is for, uh, oh yeah, I think I have to like unlock for editing or something. Run. I don't know. For some odd reason it doesn't stop this. Whatever, doesn't matter. But that's pretty much all I have to do. And now we have the ability to actually network log racing rivals. If Fiddler is closed, you do need to go in and actually turn off the proxy on this version of Android or else it's going to just act like there's no internet connection. But that's how easy it was for us to get network logging on Racing Rivals, and I'll show you that it actually does work on potentially other games as well, because as you can see, I have Drag Racing 1.1.17 here, uh, which is another game I would love to bring back from the dead, because the devs utterly killed this game when they made the new version of it. But as you can see... Some stuff actually doesn't return a damn thing. <coughs> but I can easily go into the, uh, whatchamacallit, I can easily go into the APK on this as well and just try to, uh, network log it. See how this works. Base. Opponent has a newer version. Yeah, I know. That's actually not true. It just doesn't have a server to go to, so it doesn't send back a response. And I have no idea what this response is supposed to look like. But this is yet another game where this is possible. Um, there's probably even other games I have on my computer where I could show off network data logging ah car town let's do it i'll show you network data logging with car town so let's see where this goes ah there it is file not found i wonder we're gonna try something real quick well would you look at that if i try to it really gets mad <laughs> but I did an auto response to just an empty file and it does not like it not at all but again this just shows that you can do auto responses with this tool very easily as well as any kind of uh, really most Android games that support any form of Android uh Android 5.1.1, uh, which I don't think this one will. Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh, it goes to the Unity Cloud. Oh, it's like frozen. I think it's running. I don't know why I got a stream for a user ID. Okay, maybe No Limits was a little bit too hopeful. It's a little too new. 
There's probably other games I got. I want to find one more. Well, I don't have any more games at the moment, but this just proves how much simpler this is going to make it for trying to bring back older games that no longer have servers for uh, Android. I find it really interesting that there's not that many private servers for old school Android games, and it I don't honestly understand why. I wish there were. Uh, I hope Racing Rivals can actually kind of help jumpstart that. I know source code and stuff like that has leaked for games like uh, Clash of Clans and things like that, and there's been servers made for a lot of those uh, like anime-based games that are RPGs and stuff. I would really like to see it happen for more games that were popular in other genres of games. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.